Hello and welcome to the Capital Area School Development Association Virtual College Fair. We're so excited to have you participating in this event. We have some fantastic schools here with us today. My name is Jenny and I will be your facilitator. Before we get started, I have a few housekeeping items. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to check out the schedule on the website. This presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com slash C-A-S-D-A-N-Y. I'd now like to turn it over to our first presenter, Sacred Heart University. You're muted. Hi, everybody. My name is Rachel Prophet. I'm the admissions counselor at Sacred Heart University. So I'm just going to share some slides with you. Um, has some really great information on it. So just a few facts about us. Um, we were founded in 1963 by the Diocese of Bridgeport. Um, we are the second largest Catholic university in New England. Um, and our undergraduate enrollment is about 6,000, um, giving us a total enrollment with graduate students, 9,000. Here's a little bit of our academic overview. We are made up of six colleges, um, which is the College of Arts and Sciences, and broken down into that, it's our School of Communication, Media, and the Arts, um, and the School of Social Work. Our next college is Isabel Farrington College of Education. Our Jack Welch College of Business and Technology, which is also our School of Computer Science and Engineering. And then our Davis and Henley College of Nursing, um, College in Health Professions, and our St. Vincent's College. Here's a little bit about our College of Arts and Sciences. Off to the left, we have a ton of different um, programs that you can go into, different majors um, like biology, um, coastal marine science. And then off to the right, we have our sports communication and media, our public relations. We now have an esports minor and our theater arts major and art and design. This is our Isabel Farrington College of Education. Um, we are a five-year program. So during your first year or during your four years, you are majoring in interdisciplinary studies or interdisciplinary studies STEM for elementary education. Or for secondary education, you would major in um, a content area that you are most interested in, like history, math, um, Spanish, science. Or you can also do STEM as well. And then our fifth year is your internship program. So it's about, um, you get 30 out of 39 credits paid for by the district um, you will be working in. And then at night you will be taking your classes for your masters. This is our Jack Welch College of Business and Technology. Um, some of our undergraduate business programs, finance, business economics, business management, um, our sports management, hospitality, resort and tourism management, marketing, fashion, marketing and merchandising. And then some of our technology programs are computer engineering, computer science, game design and development, and cybersecurity, information and technology. So our College of Health Professions, um, our undergraduate programs are communication disorders, which you can also um, then go on to speech pathology with that, our exercise science, which is very popular, and our health science. And then our master degrees are athletic training, exercise science and nutrition, healthcare administration, healthcare informatics, we have occupational therapy, physician assistant studies, speech pathology, and then we also have a doctorate program for our physical therapy, which is an accelerated program as well. And then um, finally, we have our Bachelor of Science in Nursing. Um, it's very competitive. It's direct entry. Um, we have a new state-of-the-art simulation lab, which where you'll be taking your classes. 
and um, clinicals begin sophomore year. So you get plenty of experience. Um, a little fact about our nursing program, we are 99% rate, uh, pass rate on our NCLEX. Our Center for Career and Professional Development is a very well-known department on campus. Um, you can go in right as a freshman, kind of learn about resumes, um, interviews, internships, meet your counselor, um, and they'll be with you every step of the way. It's never too early to start that process. Um, and then a little fact about that is we have a 99% full-time employment or graduate study placement within one year of graduation. Getting, oh, sorry, getting involved on campus is super important for our Sacred Heart community. We have 60 plus clubs and organizations. We have academic clubs. We have Greek Life, our 13 fraternity and sorority life organizations. We are a D1 school. Um, we have over 33 Division I teams. We have over 35 club sports teams. And then we have our big performing arts program with band, orchestra, color guard, chorus, dance, theater arts, and we also have campus ministry and our multicultural organizations. Thomas More Honors Program is um, the honors program that we have at Sacred Heart. It's a select admission. Um, you do need a 3.8 GPA, um, a minimum of 15 credits of a APIB honors or college or dual enrollment courses. Um, the participation in our honors program, you'd be doing a living learning community. So you are um, placed in housing, um, probably the best residential life hall that we have. And then you also receive some scholarship for that. We do have four years of housing available and which is pretty great. And then um, we do have a study abroad program at Sacred Heart. And then these are our application dates. If you want to take a look at those, priority deadline for College of Nursing. And then if you have any student financial aid questions, feel free to go to Sacred Heart's um, financial aid page and you can connect with one of your counselors there. If you have any questions about the FAFSA CSS profile or any um, other any other um, programs we have. All right, thank you so much and I hope you enjoyed your night. Thank you, I appreciate it. And a reminder to all of our participants that you can use that Q&A function to ask questions of all of our institutions here at any time during the presentation. Up next, we have University of Connecticut. Good evening, everyone. My name is Jeremy Krause and I am the Senior Admissions Officer at the University of Connecticut. About us, we were founded in 1881 as an agricultural school in the lovely town of Storrs, Connecticut. If you haven't been, come visit us. We're 90 minutes from Boston, two hours from New York City, about two and a half hours from Albany, half an hour outside of Hartford. We have 19,000 undergrad. Despite that though, we are still a 16 to one student to teacher ratio. 60% of our student body come from in-state. The other 40% do come from out of state. We currently have students from 104 different countries in every state within this country. Most popular out of state states is New York, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, and New Jersey. Our student body is comprised of 47% students of diverse background, 50% men, 50% women. Again, this is all done by design as we wanna bring the outside world within the confines of the University of Connecticut to prepare you all to become beneficial members of society. Academically, we have 115 majors in 10 different schools and colleges. Uh, we do have four regional campuses that are featured, depending on what it is that you want to major in. For example, our Avery Point campus is featuring our marine science program, and our Stanford campus right outside New York City is renowned for financial management. However, all programs that I'll be talking about will be in context to stores because that is our main campus. When you think of UConn, you are thinking of stores. We have our own College of Agriculture, Health and Natural Resources, home to our traditional agri-education programs, but it's also our animal sciences, our kinesiology, our dietetics, and our allied health programs. We have one of the top schools of business in the country. It is a direct entry program. It goes all the way up to a PhD. Popular programs like accounting, finance, marketing, management, but we have some more nuanced programs like analytics and urban economics and real estate. 
We have one of the top schools of education in the country, which is not direct entry. Our students apply in their third semester based on their concentrations. We certify in elementary, middle, secondary. And we have one of the top special ed programs in the country. Our sports management program is also in our school of education. We have a phenomenal school of engineering that's been around for over a century. We go to a PhD in over a dozen different concentrations. Our most popular tracks are biomedical, mechanical, and computer science. We do have our own school of fine arts, of course. Very nice contrast to all the research to have our own conservatory. University of Connecticut has one of the top dramatic art programs in the country. We have one of the top puppetry programs in the entire world. I hope everyone is sitting down for that. We do music, art, art history, digital media design. We have our College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, home to traditional majors like biology, psychology, communications, and economics, over 60 as a matter of fact. We have a direct entry school of nursing. We have one of the oldest and most prestigious schools of pharmacy in the country. We have a school of social work that offers not only a bachelor's, but also a master's and PhDs in social work. And of course we have undecided, very popular at UConn. One quarter of our students come in undecided. We'll help you every step of the way. Even coming to UConn und undecided, you'll still more than likely graduate in four years. In fact, we have a 4.1 rate of graduation. That's one of the best for any public school in the country. Of course, we do want you engaged every minute of the day. We have an abundance of experiential opportunities. We have our own honors program. We have study abroad. We go to over 200 uh, countries, 60, uh, 65 uh, different countries, 200 programs. And of course, we have our own Office of Undergraduate Research. We are a Carnegie Tier 1 Research 1 facility. We do like our research at UConn. Of course, we do want you uh, involved with other clubs and organizations. In fact, we have over 750 of them, everything from acapella to yoga, all things in between. We have music ensembles and dance teams. And if you like doing community service, our students only did 1.3 million hours of it last year alone. It is definitely part of our identity. Also part of our identity, sports, something about basketball. You may have heard something about 15 NCAA titles in the last 21 years. If you're counting, of course you are. Go Huskies to that. We also have club teams and over 100 intramural sports. Are you looking for Greek life? We have that, over 30 nationally recognized fraternities and sororities. On campus, only 15% of our student body go Greek not the overwhelming majority by all means is not go Greek or go home at UConn. In fact, if you attend the University of Connecticut, you'll likely not go home. Our students don't leave on the weekends. Over 75% of our student body live on campus all four years. We do have financial aid for those who qualify. We have part-time jobs available, over 8,000 of them on campus. But of course, our success is measured by our student success. We only have 270,000 alumni working all over the world. We will help you every step of the way. Admissions, we review holistically. We did receive 38,000 applications for 3,700 seats last year. We look at both your cognitive and your non-cognitive. So how you've done in the classroom, but also how you've done outside the classroom. For 2022 and 2023, we are test optional. If you'd like to apply with your standardized testing, we welcome it. And if not, that is fine too. Applying test optional will still allow you to be considered for our merit, our honors, and our combined programs. UConn has combined programs in medicine, dental medicine, law, and education. These are assurances to our graduate schools before you graduate from high school. These are not obligations though. If you got into Harvard Medical School, you can go there. I hear they're pretty good. We look at your non-cognitive. What have you done outside the classroom? Your activities, maybe your senior class president, or you play the trumpet, or you've done 500 hours of community service. These are very admirable. We want to see that you're going to be engaged and collaborative with your fellow Huskies because we are assuring you that we're gonna surround you with thousands of like-minded individuals from day one, as soon as you hit campus. We look at your essay, we do look at letters of recommendation, although they are optional. Most importantly, our School of Engineering requires chemistry and physics, our School of Nursing requires chemistry, our School of Fine Arts requires a portfolio or an audition. We do not pre-screen for the School of Fine Arts and we do these programs concurrent to the application review. As far as next steps, come and visit us. We're doing in-person tours, around the clock. And our website, uconn.edu, is an excellent resource of information. Find out what we're serving in our eight dining halls or how to join our skydiving team or how to find me, Jeremy Kraus. Love to hear from you. Send me an email. But until then, be well and go Huskies. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Up next, we have Western Connecticut State University. Hi everyone, thank you for joining me this evening. Uh, my name is Amory Savaris. I'm the Assistant Director of Admissions at Western Connecticut State University. Um, I have a short presentation here for you all tonight to get, have you get to know WCSU just a little bit better.
Western Connecticut State University is located in Danbury, Connecticut. So we are not far from the New York border. We offer over um, 50 academic majors at WCSU and four schools of study. Our schools of study include our Ansel School of Business, which is AACSB accredited. It is also home to our Justice and Law Administration program, which is similar to a criminal justice degree. Also within our business school, popular programs are accounting, finance, marketing management, management information systems, and our newest program is cybersecurity. Our next school of study that we have is our visual and performing arts school. It is held within a $98 million visual and performing arts building. We have a musical theater program. We have music education, music performance, art, and different theater programs as well. We also have a school of professional studies, which is home to nursing, education, social work, and health promotion and exercise sciences. We also have our Macrocosta School of Arts and Sciences, which is our largest academic school at WCSU. It is home to biology, chemistry, communication, psychology, economics, even a meteorology program. We have our own weather center at WCSU. Our student to faculty ratio is 12 to one. So you have a lot of individualized attention within the classroom as well as with your advisors. A typical classroom size is about 25. So we do not have any real large lecture halls at WCSU. So you will get to know students within your program as well as your faculty very well. You will not be a number at WCSU. You will be part of a campus community. We have about 5,200 total students at WCSU. So we are a small to medium sized institution. We have over 75 active clubs and organizations on campus. We have everything from an accounting society, education, society, so programs that are within your sort of related to your major, as well as we have um, sorority and fraternity life on campus. We have student government association, program activities council. We have a hockey club, rugby, um, cheer and dance, as well as lots of other uh, clubs and organizations, an adventure club. Um, so lots of different ways to stay involved. We have 18 division three sports, which I'll get, talk a little bit more a little bit later on. And we were founded in 1903 as a teacher's college. A little bit about academics. I mentioned uh, quite a few of our programs before. Uh, we have an advisement center for students who are interested in coming in undeclared. Undeclared is also our largest enrolled program. So if you are not sure what you wanna major in yet, you can definitely be undeclared undeclared at WCSU and you would work with somebody within our advisement center. We also have an excellent first year program for all students, whether you're declared or undeclared. You would take a one credit class that introduces you to WCSU, as well as if you have a declared major, major it, would it would introduce you to your program of study. We have faculty advisors for students who have declared majors. So if you know that you would like to be a nursing major, you would be connected with a nursing faculty member as your advisor and so on with music or accounting or whatever your major may be if you already know. We have excellent tutoring resources for our students. We have tutoring resource centers specifically for math and writing. And then we have a general tutoring resource center um, for anything outside of math and writing. And we have a learning commons for any of our business programs. So if you need extra help in any of your business classes, um, that learning commons is there for all of our business students. We do offer a business undeclared program as well. So if you're interested in business, but you're not sure what concentration yet, you maybe have an interest in finance, um, but you really want to keep your options open, uh, you can definitely major as a business undeclared student. We do have wonderful housing options. We have six beautiful residence halls at WCSU, three are traditional dorm style on our Midtown campus. And then we have three apartment and suite style over on our West Side campus. We have lots of help within our residence halls, both um, advisors for academics as well as uh, social groups on campus. And we have an excellent career success center. Um, something very unique about WCSU is 90 um, 9% of our internships are actually paid internships. So if you want to get to know a little bit about that, you can check out our Career Success Center. Um, their website is um, online and they have lots of great tools for our students. It's also a lifetime partnership with our students. So should you graduate from WCSU, 
and be in one career field and looking to change either career fields or jobs, WCSU's Career Success Center will be there to help you. We're partners with Handshake, and we have lots of tools and resources for our students. We also have an excellent Kathwari Honors Program. It's named after the CEO of Ethan Allen, Mr. Kathwari. Uh, we have over 400 students in our Kathwari Honors Program from across all of our majors of study. We have excellent research opportunities for students. We've had six Fulbright Scholars at WCSU um, come out of our Kathwari Honors Program. There's special scholarships, both merit, as well as um, other opportunities for students. I just wanna talk a little bit about our application process. So we do look for about an 85 unweighted grade point average and about 1100 on the SATs. However, we do have an SAT optional application. Students should submit the Common App as well as a $50 application fee and then your official transcript and a college essay. We do not require letters of recommendation but you should definitely have them submitted. And something really special about WCSU is we offer our in-state tuition to students from New York so if you're coming to live on campus, your tuition fees, room and board will be just under 26,000. If you're just commuting to campus, if you live close to Danbury, um, tuition would be just under 12,000. Definitely think about staying connected to us. I'll throw in some of my information as well as our virtual and on-campus tour opportunities, as well as additional information on the application process. Thank you again for having me tonight. Thank you so much. And a reminder to our participants to use that Q&A function to ask questions of our schools here at any time during the presentation. Up next, we have Central Connecticut State University. Well, good evening. Thank you so much uh, for having us this evening. My name is Alan Tang. I'm one of the admissions representatives here at Central Connecticut State University located in New Britain, Connecticut. So we're just about 15, 20 minutes from Hartford and about 15, 20 minutes from Waterbury. So right there off of that 84 uh, turnpike. Um, I'm going to share a quick screen so we can go through a little presentation for you about being a student at Central Connecticut State University. Basically a quick demographic, 54% male, 46% female. Our students range from about 32 different states, 40 countries. We have about 9,600 undergraduate students. Um, with about 36% student of color. So we are a very diverse campus, uh, which exemplifies the type of learning that you're gonna receive at the institution. One of the things that we do like to highlight is the fact that even though we have a, a campus size of roughly um, 9,600 students, you will see that our average class size is about 25 with about a 14 to one student to faculty ratio. In recent years, we had an opportunity to connect with some of our grads and learn three, five years out that they said that we prepared them for graduate and professional schools and they were doing well in their industry. So that's one of the things that makes us phenomenal at what we do here at Central. We are the oldest of the four CSUs um, and also the largest of the four CSUs. Our 100 plus majors are found within one of these four pillars, the College of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences, the School of Business, which is AACSB accredited, the School of Education and Professional Studies, as well as the School of Engineering, Science and Technology. You will find that there are over 150 plus clubs and activities that are available to you on our campus. Everything from Keisha to Waka Flock of Flame, T-Pain, Hesse McIntyre, uh, Tenere, sorry, um, with the Hootie were on campus, as well as special performances or speeches by President Barack Obama, Martin Rothblatt, who was the founder of Sirius Radio. We have open mics, Caribbean balls, the film festival, eSports. So you'll find that there are quite a bit of opportunities for you to, get, to engage and also to connect with other students while your journey is taking place at Central. We provide a wide range of opportunities on campus, but also abroad. There are opportunities where students can take courses or even study abroad from a 10, 10 day program to a full semester to a full year. So it really gives you an opportunity to experience yet another learning culture from a different platform. We just always encourage you to connect with your advisor to make sure the courses that you're taking are one relevant to your program of study, but will also transfer back to your program of study. 
Also on the screen, you will see a little bit of ROI, return on investment. Various various companies from hospital special care to ESPN to Foxwoods to Verizon, Cigna, places where our graduates are now employed. So there's a world, a wealth of knowledge and opportunities for you. We provide all of this opportunity at quite a quite a bit of a bargain. We are the cheapest uh, public university in the state of Connecticut. Um, you will see that basically we do offer a New England slash New York, New Jersey rate, which basically the tuition is about 14624 total cost of 26978 So yes, as a, a New York resident, you do have the opportunity to enjoy the campus at a reduced cost uh, while here. Of course, we don't expect that you're going to come out of pocket for that total amount. So we do offer a wide range of scholarship opportunities that are administered at time of application. So once your application comes in and during the admissions review, we will select students based upon your academic profile. That means 9, 10, 11 into your senior year. Yes, the grades that you have earned. Uh, we've removed the SAT component of that review in the merit scholarship. We also offer an honors program like my, my co other colleagues. The honors program has an application deadline of December 1, but if admitted into the honors program, you will have a $4,500 scholarship that will also be combined with any additional merit aid scholarship that the admission office awards you. So yes, in fact, you can have the ability to have your full tuition covered at Central for the four years once you maintain your academic proficiency. We also offer financial aid. That deadline, to, the application opened up on October 1st. We have a priority filing deadline of March 1, but we will continuously look at students' packages as they submit. Of course, we are one in, a one document institution. So if you have, uh, once you submit the FAFSA, that's all you need. It will help us to understand whether or not you qualify for any federal loans, grants, or work study. And then we will add state in-state information for you at in-state grants as well through your process. How do you get this all started? Well, it's as simple as just sim applying, right? So basically we ask that when you apply, we have a rolling admissions deadline. So pretty much you can apply at any given point in time, even though yes, the honors program does actually have a December 1 deadline. We have a May 1st deadline, which means that's the date that we know our, what our class is gonna look like, whether or not we're gonna keep the doors open or shut the application door. So you do wanna get your application in as soon as possible. It generally takes anywhere between a week to two weeks before you will get a decision once your application is complete. And what is the makeup of that complete application? Well, basically it's the application itself. Yes, you do have to click that submit button. Uh, application fee or fee waiver is also um, needed. However, currently right now, we do have a fee waiver on our website that will carry your application through to the end of this month. So you can take advantage of that fee waiver at this point. You will also need your high school transcript showcasing your 9th, 10th, 11th into your senior year, as well as SAT and or ACT scores, a minimum 250 word essay, and yes, two letters of recommendations is currently needed for our institution. This is just a quick profile of our institution. Uh, last class was roughly just under 1,100 on the SATs, a composite of 22. Students ranked around a 3.1 GPA and in the top 40% of their class. One of the things I would encourage you to do is stay connected with us. We offer a wide range of opportunity to help you understand how your life and your journey can actually culminate with us here in New Britain. It's a pleasure connecting with you, and I look forward to talking a little bit more during the question and answer period. Thank you. Thank you. That was wonderful. Up next, we have the University of New Haven. Welcome, my name is Michelle. I'm a counselor at University of New Haven. Um, so one of the first things that we like to bring up when talking about the university is some of our rankings and recognitions. Um, so we were ranked by the Princeton Review as one of the best 387 colleges um, in the country for the 2022 year. So another uh, consecutive year in a row. Um, we're also ranked one of the best colleges by the US News and World Report um, for another year in a row. So we're very proud to hold these rankings. Um, so we did turn 100 last year. So um, part of our um, 100th year birthday present was the Bergami Center for Science, Technology and Innovation. Um, it had its grand opening last fall. Um, this is a brand new 40,000 square foot facility. Um, it has some 
brand new advanced smart classrooms in there, some um, new communication studios, um, and just some maker spaces where students can, you know, work on group projects. Um, there's a cafe in there. So we're just really excited to share this with our current and incoming students. Um, so I do want to talk about the location a little bit. So we are located in West Haven, Connecticut, just about five miles from downtown New Haven, um, which is like a live college city. So a lot of stuff to do. Um, we're right in between New York City and Boston. So you just hop on our shuttle. It takes you right to the train station and you can get to New York City in a little bit over an hour and then Boston in a little bit over two hours. Um, we're also just about a 10 minute drive to the beach. So right next to Long Island Sound. Um, so we are in a pretty ideal location. So we have just over 5,000 full-time undergraduate students. So that puts us in the small to medium-sized campus range. Um, we have over 100 majors and programs and over 85 minors and certificates, as well as over 35 graduate degree programs. Our average class size is 20 students. Um, so, you know, the professor is going to know your name. A lot of times they give out their phone number so that, you know, you can reach out to them if you're studying for an exam and you don't understand something. So they make themselves really accessible to the class. And I think that's uh, super important. Um, we have over 150 clubs and organizations. So um, really, it's kind of impossible um, not to get involved on campus because there's so much um, going on. We actually have over 3,000 events um, hosted on campus each year. So something going on quite literally um, every single day. So I do want to talk about this, um, this percentage right here. So 95% of our 2019 graduates within six months of graduating um, either had a job directly in their field of study or went on to graduate school. Um, what's significant is that we don't count the students in the statistic that have um, that got a job not related to their field of study. So it only includes students that got a job directly related to their major. Um, we also have over 50 dual degree programs, um, which basically is a way for you to get direct entry into your bachelor's and your master's program. So you won't have to apply to get into your master's. You'll go right from your bachelor's to your master's. It'll save you about um, a year um, of school. So obviously it's going to save you some money. Um, so just something to keep in mind when you look at, look at different opportunities. Um, and then our career development center posts over 2000 jobs and internships each year, and they do a really good job helping our students um, with finding internships. Um, our career development centers actually rank number 17 in the country for career services. Um, so we're very proud of that. So who is a charger? Um, so about 30% of our students identify as part of an underrepresented group. Um, and then about 40% of the 2025 class are first gen students. 90% um, of our first year students live on campus. Um, and then 65% of our upperclassmen live on, on campus. Um, and the other 35% will, you know, get an off campus apartment. We also have some university sponsored apartments as well. Um, I do also want to mention that we have um, students coming from 41 different states and 55 foreign countries. So we have a very diverse population of students. And then 90% of our faculty, so 90% of those professors hold a PhD or the terminal degree in their field. Um, so these are the five colleges that we have on campus. These house all of our majors and programs. Um, this is just a quick list of some of the places where our students have gone on for internships and jobs. Um, of course, the list is much longer, but when you look up our programs online, you can see the, um, the places specific to those different programs. Um, we also have study abroad. So we have over 100 study abroad programs. Um, you can study for a semester, a full year, or even two weeks and get three credits in two weeks. So it's pretty nice. We also have our satellite campus over in Italy. So it is U New Haven. Um, it's our Prado campus. So you can study there for the exact same tuition as studying here in West Haven. So just a little bit on student life. Um, we have a student run radio station. We have a marching band, a dance team, cheerleading team. Um, ROTC. We also have Greek life, which you can't see pictured here, but again, just a lot of things going on on campus. I know I only have a minute left, so I'm trying to um, speed by this. Um, we do have five halls on campus for our first year students, and four of the five are set up in a suite style. Um, there's only one that's the traditional dorm style. Um, as for uh, sports, we do participate um, in the NCAA Division II in the Northeast 10 Conference. We have 18 varsity sports as well as 18 club sports. I do want to get into the application process real quick. So we are part of the common application. Um, so basically you'll submit the common app and then all that we ask for is your transcript and then one letter of rec from um, a teacher or a counselor. Um, we are SAT optional um, as well as essay optional. So you don't need to submit those to us and it won't hurt your application. 
There is a $50 application fee, um, but if you register um, on our website, you should get emailed a fee waiver code. Um, and then these are the four deadlines. Um, the deadline that I recommend is early action because it's non-binding. The deadline's December 15, um, so you'll get your decision before the new year. And then I know I'm at six minutes. I do want to quickly mention that when you apply, you're automatically considered for a scholarship um, ranging from $10,000 to $28,000 per year. Um, so whatever you're awarded will be reawarded to you every year. And this isn't um, a different application that you need to submit. Um, so that's automatically awarded to you. Um, so thank you so much. And I'll include my, my contact info in the chat box. Thank you. And a reminder to our participants to use that Q&A function to ask questions of our institutions here during the presentation. Up next, we have the University of New Hampshire. Thank you so much. Hey, hey everybody. My name is Nian Quach, and I am your admission counselor from the University of New Hampshire. So UNH is a flagship public tier one research university for the state of New Hampshire. I know I feel I'm crashing the Connecticut party here, uh, but now there are many reasons why New York students choose to attend the University of New Hampshire. Uh, but for tonight, I want to highlight the top three for you, and they are our academic our communities, and of course, student outcomes. Um, I'll start by talking a little about our academics. So UNH or the University of New Hampshire offer over a hundred different majors for you to choose from. And one of the things that really distinguish UNH and our learning experience is truly our focus on research. Um, and research go beyond STEM field, right? So research is really about asking questions and then searching for answer. So regardless of a student major, whether it's political science, teaching, business or engineering, you are encouraged. And I think more importantly, have the opportunity to do research during your four years with the University of New Hampshire. And at UNH, you do so at a top tier research institution. We are one of just 20 land, sea, and space grant university in the country, and one of just three public tier one research university in New England. And then here are the five colleges within the University of New Hampshire. All the program at UNH are direct entry, including nursing, all of our engineering program, computer science, or business. We also have unique programs such as equine study and popular program, including marine biology and animal sciences. All of the program, again, are direct entry, all of them are test optional, um, and we'll certainly encourage you to check out um, all the available, major available to you. We also have over 50 different research center and institute on and around campus. But tonight I'd like to highlight a few of you, uh, a few of them for you. Um, so this is our interoperability lab or IOL at UNH, which actually one of the world leading testing facility for data and networking product. Um, it employ many of our current undergraduate students, especially those in computer science or engineering, not trying to name drop, but this is also where the first Apple iPhone was tested by our, our very own UNH student before being released to the market. And then once again, our research goes beyond the STEM fields. Here are some images of exercise science lab, our organic dairy research farm, aka amazing ice cream on campus. Of course, there are also um, great facility available to our liberal arts student, um, such as our Center for Research on Child Development. The second aspect of the University of New Hampshire that I want to highlight is our community. We're currently sitting at around 13,000 undergraduate students and 15,000 overall. So this means that we are big enough to offer you all the resources, the opportunities, school spirit, um, but at the same time, still able to maintain that more intimate and personal connection to your faculty, your classmates, the people in the community that you belong to. 
Our students also embrace all the opportunity that our location, our residential, traditional campus, and our size offer them. Um, students at the University of Hampshire are guaranteed housing for all four years, and the vast majority of freshmen, 96% to be exact, do live on our Durham campus, which has this very classic New England college feel. We have 27 different resin hall for you to choose from and three award-winning dining hall throughout campus. And if you are wondering what people do in New Hampshire, I got you. Our students do keep very busy on and off campus throughout the week as well as on the weekend from, you know, going to the visual and athletics event. We're huge on hockey and football to participating in over 250 student-led organization on and around campus. Tons and tons of things to do, movie, performances, lecture, and so much more. Of course, our location is also a big draw for New Yorker as it's offers student a lot of different opportunity. We're now north of Boston, one hour and a half of the majestic White Mountain, and of course, short 20 minutes from the Atlantic Ocean. We are literally in the middle of everywhere. And our Durham campus is very easy to get to. Um, it's about, you know, four hour, four hour and a half um, from Albany and a lot of the city. I'm um, in New York, four hour and a half from New York City. Um, there's buses um, that go from Durham and the seacoast area of New Hampshire directly to um, downtown New York, uh, in the heart of New York City on a daily basis. The third aspect of UNH I want to highlight for you is our student outcomes. Um, you can see that overall, the vast majority of our graduates reported that they were employed or in graduate school. And if they are working, the majority report that their job is related to the major area of study at UNH. I think these results really speak to the value of a UNH education. Lastly, we are a common app school. Our early action is November 15th and regular decision is February 1st. Again, test optional. And I also wanna highlight that we provide quite a bit of financial support to our incoming student in the form of need-based aid as well as merit scholarship. And with that, here is my contact information. Thank you so much for your time today and I hope to hear from you soon. Thank you. And thank you to all of our institutions here today. It was lovely hearing about all of you. Um, I'll ask everyone to come back on camera now. We have time for one quick um, question for our Q&A. So I'll put that on our screen now. And that is, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? So you can share your uh, nuggets of wisdom with all of our um, participants here today. So we'll go in the same order, round robin, um, yeah. All righty, have at it. What advice would you give someone uh, going through the search process? Um, the advice that I would give was take advantage of every opportunity, keep an open mind and get involved with anything that you are interested in on campus. Ask lots of questions. It's your future. Don't take it lightly. I said definitely come and take advantage of all the campus events that universities offer. So whether it be open houses or eventually accepted student events, Saturday information sessions, uh, we put on really great programs for you throughout all the stages. So come and visit campuses as much as you can. I would encourage you to keep your family involved in the process as you're doing your college search. Uh, like my colleagues say, get, get involved. Uh, go visit, but definitely keep your family, build a community, a college search community that you can actually ask questions of those that may have actually done this in the past or they too might be looking at colleges uh, down the road. So definitely build yourself a community to help you as you navigate this search process. I just would definitely be to, you know, just um, make those connections on campus, whether it's with, you know, your advisor or professor, faculty members, just make those connections because they're really going to help you um, with networking and, you know, and like just helping you with everything, with, you know, the after and also just, it's good to, you know, have them as connections while you're on campus if you need like some, you know, help with the classes. So um, that's just my piece of advice. All right. And 
So my advice would be once you've done all that, okay, all the advice that's been given to you, take a deep breath and try to have some fun. Because, um, you know, college application process is all about the fit. And, you know, you find a school that best fit you and try to enjoy the process. So have fun. Thank you so much. That's all fantastic advice and fantastic advice to end on is have fun. Thank you so much. Thank you to all of our participants for joining us and our schools for being here today. Um, when you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick five question survey. So we'd really appreciate any feedback that you can provide. And we encourage you to check back to the schedule and sign up for more sessions that are happening right after this one. You'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other session recordings at strivescan.com slash C-A-S-D a n y thank you so much have a great evening bye now